is a fact, but it's not an empirical, I cannot offer any empirical evidence. By that I mean testable, observable, repeatable, demonstrable in the laboratory because I wasn't there. Uh, it cannot be done again, evidently. It's a one-time event that is not testable. It's not, so by the strict definition of empirical, scientific em empirical evidence, it is not, and neither is evolution. They are both uh, hypothesis, theories, uh, whatever word you want to use. Uh, Let me stop you right there. Okay. Yes. Now, I still, do you, how do you feel about evolution? Do you still say I, I feel it, it is uh, not a fact. Evolution is an explanation that draws together the relationships displayed over and over again in facts. And it is something that we, we, we know more about each decade or year or otherwise, it's self-correcting will be improved. And to say that, for instance, Darwin was perfectly correct, no, he was not perfectly wrong either. And uh, Homo sapiens, of course, doesn't count very much because we've taken ourselves out of natural selection and out of the arena of uh, simply survival of the fittest. On the other hand, I might add that in our, our indifference, if I were going to get on religion, on anything, I would say it has only been in the past decade that I've seen very much towards stewardship toward this earth. And now in the last week, I've seen a lot more of churches taking on the stewardship of this earth and not to subdue it. It's not a plaything for you to louse up uh, and the, with the environment thing, and it's almost uh, mirrors the way industry suddenly said, oh, we've always been interested in the environment. Um, we're going to have to come to grips with the fact that Homo sapiens has lived prodigally. And we have Stern. abused. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. That sounds like you're talking my language. Hey, I mean, I've, uh, I've spent a lot of time in a lot of churches. <laughs> let, me, let me say this and I'll get back because, and I think I stated on the radio yesterday, uh, I believe creation because the Bible says I'm a very simple-minded preacher. Just, But I would like to, I believe both of you have some evidences that uh, would cause one to be believe, and obviously you can't prove you, no, nobody was there. I guess that's what you're both saying. Nobody was there to document. You don't have any eyewitness accounts. But what are the facts that cause you to be outside extra-biblical facts that cause you to believe creation, cause you to believe evolution, besides the age of the earth? Because we've already dealt with that age of the earth. Okay, uh, yes, to, con to finish, the, uh, the complexity of life indicates that the design, and he referred to uh, um, fossils are accidents uh, because things are designed to recycle themselves, and uh, I agree, the whole universe is designed, and that indicates a designer. All I have to do is pick up any book and realize that book had an author. To think that a book would come together by an accident, an explosion in a printing press, uh, is absolute folly. And to look at the design in nature and to say that this is a result of a, an accumulation of accidents over billions of years is the height of folly. It had to be designed. That's the best evidence for creation. We have a cre the, the creation itself, the design, is the best evidence for a creator, just like an automobile is the best evidence for a designer. Sure, the automobiles have flaws, but they don't come together from an explosion in a junkyard. They are designed and it takes intelligent input and effort. I worked at General Motors uh, for two years. and Not too intelligent design, but a little bit. Uh. <laughs> what about, um, so would that be uh, geologically any... The, same, the, earth, the earth also has some incredible processes of recycling and purifying the atmosphere and purifying the water and the very fact that we have water. Water is an incredible desi incredibly designed commodity without which life cannot exist. Um, when it freezes, it floats instead of sinks like every other, every, every other liquid that freezes. Um, that was designed so that the fish could live during the winter time. Uh, there are so many things that the earth is the, just the precise distance from the sun and the precise mass to uh, match the gravitational attraction matches uh, uh, our body and everything is just precisely designed for human life and we can only exist in a thin slice even of our own earth. We cannot live too high in the atmosphere or too deep in the ocean. So there's very, uh, 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 it's very obvious it was uh, designed by a designer. Now as far as who he was, you know, the religions of the world argue that all the time. I, I happen to know him personally, uh, so <laughs> I don't have a question, I don't have a problem about that. But that's, I think, the best evidence for creation is the design.
I, I chuckled, not because I was laughing at you, but I was reminded of my paleontological and biological friends who are in the business of classifying and arguing whether this particular creature is the same species as this or that. And since species by biology has more to do with whether they can produce uh, offspring that are fertile, I always ask them, well, how do you know whether this clam could reproduce with that clam fossil? Um, classifications and design are creations of homo sapiens. We are the ones who generate classifications. We're very upset when things don't fit our classifications. Uh, whether it be simple, such as, well, that used to be simple. You could tell a boy and a girl from the one in the dress was a girl, and the one with the short hair and the pants was a boy. That those criteria are not valid anymore, and so we have to come up with alternatives. And when it comes to dividing and recognizing species of plants and animals, many times the record is full of examples where a species was named because of the root and another species was named because of the leaf, and when they found that leaf on that tree with that root, that was embarrassing. Uh, but because we try to classify things, the shrinks try to classify you in terms of are you psychotic or are you paranoid, humans are not easily classified and neither is the rest of the, the animal and plant kingdom. What do you see as the... Um, creation? For Whose creation? Judeo-Christian creation? Buddhist creation? There are many beliefs about what creation was. And we don't work for a particular theological context. I can tell you this, and any scientist will tell you, that we haven't the foggiest idea where matter and energy came from. We can just say, through the conservation and first and second laws of thermodynamics, that nothing is created or destroyed. But where it came from initially, we haven't the slightest idea. And anyone who attempts to explain it is either looking for a little PR I or... sign that quote down here. I'm that's all right, yeah, put it on there. Uh, but I don't think any competent individual would do so because we just don't know. And as I said to you, why does gravity attract? Why doesn't it repel? But you see, we are merely describing what is. And if we see order, if we see logic, that depends on our perspective. And if we have a perspective, the first geologists were largely clergymen. And, and the noblemen. They're the only ones who were free and had the money to travel and look and didn't have to work. What, where, where did this evolutionary theory come from? What, what, when we get into evidence, that's what I'm trying to get, what would be the... Well, you have the, the early geologists, and, and Lyell was mentioned. Lyell is, is uh, one, and he was very much set. If you talk about an early person, Lyell came across with the principles of the great age. But... He held steadfastly to the idea of creation. And it is alleged, and I don't know this, it was alleged, even though he worked very closely with Darwin, that it was not until Lyell's uh, later years and nearly at death that he admitted that he could see that there was more um, that he believed in with Darwin's view than with the Bible. But he came from a religious background. And uh, he and a number of others went into geology to try and prove the Genesis thing. They actually had this in mind, uh, which is not to say they didn't contribute, but it is a bias to go in. And I'm not at all going to say that there aren't geologists or scientists who want to prove that evolution is right. And they will only report the evidence that supports it. And when they run into problems, uh, such as the, the young lady who called after we went off the air and she wanted to know about if all this is working well. How do you explain the anomalous movement of moon?